There's a lot of talk about whether we're in an inflationary market or a hyperinflationary market. I'm going to say that we're definitely in an inflationary market, and I'm going to show you exactly why I think that is. But to really dig into whether we're in hyperflation or if even hyperinflation is a risk, uh, we need to really understand what inflation is versus what hyperinflation is. So inflation is basically just the deterioration of the dollar or whatever currency over time. So for example, you may have heard the stories of you know your grandma saying like, oh, Coca-Cola was five cents back in my day. Well, you know, now it's like seven dollars for Coca-Cola. Well, that's inflation. It's the, the loss of your purchasing power over time. So that loss of purchasing power just means your dollar purchases less and less each consecutive year. So right now, inflation is about eight and a half percent. That's at least the way that the Federal Reserve measures inflation, which is based on consumer price index. So there's a CPI, consumer price index, that tells us kind of what the inflation is on a basket of goods in our society. Throw in politics and say that, you know, inflation is a very arbitrary number, especially things like CPI. It's been calculated many different ways over, you know, over time. And, you know, unshockingly to probably anyone, it has gotten more and more, you know, political, um, where it makes the Federal Reserve and politicians look like they're doing their job better than they actually are. Like if we measured inflation today the same way that it was in the 1980s, uh, we'd be at closer to 15% inflation. So long story short, we have pretty high inflation. It's a very arbitrary number. But that being said, what is hyperinflation? So hyperinflation is very extreme inflation, like we've seen in some countries like in Africa, South America, like Venezuela. I mean, I'm sure you've heard the stories or seen the photos of people like carrying wheelbarrows full of cash. Uh, yeah, that's hyperinflation. Inflation is about a thousand percent per year instead of 15% per year. So we got a ways to go to be in hyperinflationary territory. That being said, could inflation get worse and potentially go to hyperinflation? I don't think it's going to go to the level of hyperinflation, at least in the, here in the U.S., but do I think it could get worse? Absolutely. And this is probably going against the grain, but if you really understand kind of how inflation is done or how inflation is created, it's basically the money supply times the velocity of money over the growth domestic product. So... Uh, that gives you your basically your number of what inflation is, right? So the two key factors in there, other than you know just the, the domestic product of the country, is the amount of dollars and how quickly dollars exchange hands, aka velocity. So the amount of dollars is continuing to go up in our country. So we printed a ton of money during coronavirus, which that's what has created this problem in the first place. But since then, we've not really stopped. <laughs> um, you know, there's talk in California about creating inflationary expenses to, you know, help people deal with inflation. So they're going to basically deal with inflation that was created by printing money by printing more money. So that's that's the resolution right there. So long story short, we also have student loan forgiveness and a lot of these other things that are on the table that could increase inflation. Plus. I don't think we've seen the impacts of the Russia-Ukraine war. So, you know, as you may know by now, Russia and Ukraine are in a war, and Russia and Ukraine are both big producers of oil, they're big producers of fertilizer, and they're big producers of grain. All three of those things have a huge impact on inflation. Oil goes into transportation costs of all goods, and a lot of the businesses out there haven't really started pushing those costs onto consumers. But believe it or not, they're going to. So we just haven't seen that yet. Grain, you know, grain's going to... They're, you know, they're a staple of our food system. So without grain, lower grain means supply and demand. You're going to have little supply, high demand, chasing little supply, price goes up. Fertilizer. So lower crop yields means same demand, chasing lower quantity, price goes up. So long story short, I think inflation will definitely continue to go up once we see some of the impacts of the Ukraine war, like grain harvest and stuff, missing seasons. Um, you know, companies starting to pass on the increases in oil costs, so on and so forth. Do I think we're going to get to a hyperinflationary market? No, I don't think so. But I think an inflationary market that's going to continue for you know, potentially years at a very aggressive inflation, unless the Federal Reserve steps in and does something, I think we're going to continue to see inflation here for the, you know, the near future. But hopefully you found this video valuable. If you did, make sure you like and subscribe. Cheers.